Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like. The purpose of this channel is educational, particularly in regards to atheist and deconversion issues, and Bible, theology, politics, and philosophy, and whatever else strikes my uh, fancy uh, in relationship to deconversion and atheist uh, issues. Um, I made this remark before, so I'm going to add it to the intro. Uh, this is kind of a podcast. Uh, you can see my face. Um, I don't really edit my videos or anything like that. I just kind of talk and uh, you know deal with the issues of whatever I'm dealing with. And today... Um, I received the news that Rush Limbaugh had died of lung cancer. And I want to react to him as an example, I guess. Um, on the one side, I want to express right out the gate that life is too short of a journey to hate on anybody. I know that Rush Limbaugh is a very polarizing figure. And I want to make this disclaimer. I am very well that he's a politically polarizing figure. And therefore, um, you know, if you have any anger or love for the man, that's not the issue with this video. It's how one reacts to death as an atheist. And I want to use Rush Limbaugh as kind of something that I felt some very recent emotions about because it's today. And how that has probably changed because I've deconverted. Uh, a little brief history of me and Rush Limbaugh. I got into Rush Limbaugh back in the 90s. Uh, it was during the Gulf War, I believe. But I first heard of him and the first, you know, the first Gulf War back in 91, I believe. And me and my friend at Bible College were listening to him and we were finally saying, hey, finally somebody that's saying what we're thinking. Now, I was pretty conservative back then and uh, had a very conservative Christian point of view. And so you can imagine how much Rush Limbaugh throw my soul. Now, over the years, as I've changed and as my Christianity changed and later on it was discarded, I watched, I would listen to him, and I, I wasn't a religious listener where I'd listen to him every day, but I would listen to him every once in a while. And like all polarizing figures, I think Rush Limbaugh received an unnecessary amount of flack from people who probably didn't listen to his show. They heard one snippet of something he said and, oh, he's a racist, he's a homophobe, he's all this other stuff. When you really take the time to listen to him, he's not as bad as everybody made him out to be. He's not as good as the right made him out to be either, but uh, I think the one problem we have in our society is when we look at somebody... And this does deal with death. How we look at somebody can be propagandized. And you have to be aware of that. Um, if you really want to find out what somebody's about, go listen to them. Okay, go sit down and listen to them. Uh, he would tell people, listen to me for a week. You know, if you still don't like me after a week, <clears throat> then you're free to turn me off. Um, and I, I agree with that to a certain extent. I don't think he was as bad as the left makes him out to be. I don't think he was a right winger. On the flip side, I don't think he was a savior of Christianity and Christian radio like everybody thought he was, or radio in general. Um, I think, you know, radio just had to realize that they had to do what they did best, which is talk. You know, talk radio became a big thing. And if, if it hadn't been Rush Limbaugh, it would have been somebody else. But how do I feel about it? You know, he's died. How do I feel about that? No, I would probably have different feelings if I actually knew him. But we all have those moments where certain celebrities or certain people that were important in our development die. How do we feel about it? Now, as a Christian, I would have probably had a great deal of remorse that we had lost a voice. Um, and, you know, but I would take solace in the fact that he was in heaven. Um now that I no longer believe in heaven or hell, and now that I no longer believe in life after death, uh, I don't believe in a final judgment. I don't believe, you know, there's a lot of people on the left that say, you know, he did a lot of wrong and he never got justice for it. Well, get used to that. Um, as an atheist, I don't believe you're going to get justice in an afterlife. So you got to find a way to either do one, get justice in this world if you can, 
And if you can, you're going to have to learn to deal with injustice because it exists and you're just going to have to put up with it because it exists. So I want everybody to understand that that's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from the standpoint of thinking, oh, yeah, he's going to get his just rewards on the other side. I don't believe that. I don't also believe that, you know, you know, he's living in a paradise either. I think he just ended. And as some people have pointed out, you know, he he didn't buy the tobacco warning. So he smoked a lot of cigars in his life. And the fact that he died of lung cancer is probably not a bad, you know, you know, probably not unexplainable to some people. You know, yeah, you know, some people do avoid the death from it, but apparently not him. Um, you know, there's just this real thing with him that, you know, he did have a very spark of life and he was going to live life the way he wanted to. And you know what? I can admire that. I can respect that. Um, so how do we react to death as atheists like this? Um, I had a remark uh, on a forum that I'm a part of because somebody made a remark and then the first comment was, you know, oh, good riddance. You know, and it's like, when you make a comment like that, I didn't react specifically to that comment, but I put my own in. I refuse anymore to take joy in somebody's death. Life is a precious thing. Each individual life is a precious thing. And I don't care if they're ideologically opposed to me or they agree with me or whatever. Um, I think when somebody dies, it's something to be sad about. Okay. Because especially if they die of something, we still don't have an answer for. Okay, Cancer is still something we don't really have an answer for. We have better answers, but we don't have the answer for it. And until we do, it's a sad reflection on humanity's ability to solve a problem. Okay, And this is where science comes in because we can acknowledge, yeah, we haven't solved that problem. And that's something that we have to deal with. But I don't... Life is too short of a journey to be hating on people. And I really get disgusted. Uh, I This last few months since Trump's been deposed and all the rest of it, I've really been saddened by my atheist brothers and sisters because they seem to have no empathy for somebody that's a political opponent. And that's a problem to me because I think that's a real problem with society. You don't like it when somebody dislikes you simply because you're an atheist, where they treat you as less than human because you're an atheist, but you think you're going to solve the problem that when somebody that's ideological pose loses an election or dies, you're not going to show any empathy towards them. Oh God, fine. Good riddance. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, atheists. We can be hypocrites too. And if I'm going to be to say that I need to have human empathy for every human empathy for every human being on the planet as much as I possibly can, because that leads to survival and that leads to a better world, that includes my opponents. There's a reason I'm a compassionate anti-theist, because I know the mind warp that religion can take you through, and it's not easy to get out of. It takes a lot of work, especially if you're doing it on your own. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with my theist friends being theists and struggling with it. Or I, I have a problem with them when they don't struggle with it, and I have a problem with them when they're not honest about it. I have a problem with Christian nationalists when they try to take over the country in the name of Christ. I don't think that's right either. However, I would never stop them from holding the viewpoint that they hold. I don't believe in debate. I believe in dialogue. People ask me, would you ever debate somebody? I might do it if I know the parameters of the debate. I know what questions are going to be asked ahead of time, and I have time to prepare for them. That I also have time to look at my opponent and prepare, you know, watch their YouTube videos or whatever, whatever they have out there, read their books, so that I'm prepared for them. And 
But I would rather have a discussion than a debate. Because in a discussion, I'm trying to find out what's true. I'm not trying to be right. And I think this is the real problem when I see somebody like Rush Limbaugh die. It really comes out of the woodwork how everybody wants to be right instead of finding the truth. And I have a problem with that. And, you know, it's why I don't, you know, people say, oh, you need to take a moderate stance or you need to take a right stance or a left stance. I think all those stances are wrong because they cloud your judgment in finding what the truth is. Uh, I've taken the stance of, <clears throat> of freedom. You know, I need to be free to look at everything as ideologically, even stuff that's ideologically opposed to me most of the time, because they might be saying something that's true. And if you hate on somebody to the point where you do a tap dance when they die, I think that's a little bit close-minded, okay? Even though somebody like Rush Limbaugh couldn't have said everything he said could not, you're not going to disagree with him. It's just not possible. Sooner or later, he was going to say something and hold a viewpoint that no matter how left you are, you would agree with him. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. And does that mean that you're a traitor to your cause? No. It means you actually have a brain that realizes neither the right, left, or the center are right, okay, all the time. A lot of times they're all wrong, okay? Sometimes they're all right. But it's very, very rare for them to be right all the time. Sooner or later, truth is found where it's found. It's not right, it's not left, it's not center, it's just true. When you discover that which conforms to reality and has predictive power, you found something that's true. And it doesn't matter if that person is ideologically opposed to you. If you agree with them, you should be able to say so and not face a whole bunch of political and social backlash for doing so. Death kind of brings out the roaches, in my opinion. When somebody dies, I've watched comments on Rush Limbaugh today that are all over the place from absolute love of his patriotism. Sorry to see you go to uh, good riddance. I'm glad he's gone. You know, I hope he rots in hell. And that just really indicates a lot about a person, doesn't it? Um, I don't like certain people. I don't like I have my enemies. I don't wish their death. And I will never do so. I hope they have a long, miserable life with their cowardice, in one case. But I don't have anything against them uh, where I would wish them to be dead. Life is too short of a journey to, and this is the only one you get, to be hating. You know, I heard the left for the last four years say, love, love Trump's hate. <clears throat> and then watch them say some very vehemently hateful things for the whole four years. So, sorry, hypocrisy. I've watched the right talk about, you know, how we need to unify. The left talks about unify, but nobody ever means it. As an atheist, I'm disgusted sometimes with my own atheist brothers who have taken a left-leaning stance and take a lot of glory today that Rush Limbaugh is dead and they can say, good riddance, I'm glad he's gone. That shows a lack of empathy and I don't know if I trust you now. I will continue to stick with the statement that I can vehemently disagree with somebody and what they say but I will defend their right to say it to the death because that is the way we come to truth is genuine dialogue where everybody's listened to and we don't shut somebody down simply because they are very opposed to us. I will never shut down a religious person from expressing their viewpoint on this channel. I will shut you down for name calling because to me that shows a lack of empathy. When you name call somebody, it means you don't view that person as a person, you view them as a problem. And I work very hard not to do that. Am I perfect at it? No. Um, there's days I get frustrated just like everybody else, but I am fully aware of the problem. 
and how dealing with Rush Limbaugh's death for me personally and watching other people deal with it shows to me how empathetic they really are. How much empathy do you really possess on the left when somebody you have hated for years dies? Don't tell me you're a good person or a, a person of high moral fiber if you're doing a tap dance right now. I will do the same thing to conservatives when some left icon dies. I've seen that before. Um, one of the congressmen died recently, and I watched a whole bunch of right people saying, yeah, good, he's out of, you know, he's rotten in hell and things like that. No, <clears throat> don't, <clears throat> don't sit there and tell me you're a good person. No. You know, I have a guy that I, I consider an enemy. I would never wish for his death. Life's too short for that. I hope that his own lack of virtue has its consequences on his life. And, you know, I think they will. I don't believe in karma, but I believe that the character of your actions leads to its own consequences. Um, but I never wish for their death. I've had people hurt me over the years. I don't wish for the death because death is the finality of it. It's the final curtain. And I really think people should be respected in how that happens. You want to show me you're empathic? Consider the, who the, the person in this world that you think says the most hateful, vile things and see if you have any remorse about the thought of them not being here. I'm interested in truth. And sometimes in order to find the truth, I have to listen to people that I vehemently disagree with because that becomes the inspiration of me searching and working a little bit harder and so on and so forth. And I think that's the real issue. And today it's just kind of been reflecting on that because somebody that I used to agree with, who I now pretty much disagree with most everything, has died today. And in Rush Limbaugh, I find that my attitude about death has changed a great deal as a deconversion issue. Um, death is a final curtain, and it shouldn't be wished early on anybody. Okay. Who would about this evil person and that? Well, they, they got the results. They're dead. Uh, we usually don't feel that way about those people until afterwards, but even they... You know, I mean, I can I can have pity on certain people that I didn't have pity before, you know, and I can see how they got where they got based on how they were treated and how they lived their life. And I'm just, I guess, calling, I guess, for, you know, one of the things that really bothers me about the Internet sometimes is how it's easy not to have empathy for somebody because you don't know them personally. It's easy to get on a YouTube channel, a Facebook channel or whatever and just spill a bunch of bullshit because you don't like somebody. You don't like what somebody said. Never get too attached to your ideas that you take it personally when somebody attacks them. And never get too personally involved with a person where you hate them simply because they hold certain ideologies. If you can't convince them with your own reason and your own discussion that they're wrong, then maybe you need to work on your arguments instead of working on your hate towards them. Uh, that's just kind of my two cents today. It's not really a rabbit ramble. It's very focused on death and how death experiences cause us to to find out what we really have as far as empathy. And I just wanted to get that out there because it's one of the things as a deconverted Christian that is now an atheist, I consider quite a bit. When somebody dies, how do we display empathy as an atheist? And my empathy is... It's sad that their life has come to an end because all of our lives are going to come to an end. And I want to be treated well when mine comes. And so I treat others well when theirs comes, regardless of how much I agree or disagree with them. Hopefully that's been somewhat thought provoking for you. And hopefully someday I can convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Raby uh, signing off and wishing you a good day. Uh, and have a great one.